Hello, I'm Cody Whipple with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Today we're joined by Dave Nyhart, Bob Weber, and Nate Walters with the cold water unit for the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. In this video, Nate's going to show you how they hone in on a survey location, and then he's going to show you how they set up all their equipment prior to actually conducting this wild trout survey. Hi everyone. So we're almost to our sample site location. I have my handheld GPS here. We're just trying to find our starting point. And it looks like we're about 50 meters from the stream. So we just need to go through these few short hemlock trees. Uh, Dave's gonna go ahead and lead the way here. Right here we found our starting point, so we're going to start setting up our equipment and I'm going to start with a water chemistry using our conductivity and temperature meter. So it's important to get an accurate specific conductivity because this will help us adjust our voltage setting to make sure that we get the correct amount of current that's being output into the water to effectively electro fish and shock and stun the fish. So it looks like our specific conductivity is around 22 and our temperature is approximately 13.3 degrees Celsius. So very cold water. So I'm gonna set up our anode, which is going to be our attractor probe. So when we put the current into the water the trout are actually going to be attracted to this probe we'll swim towards it which will make it easy for us to net and capture those fish and we also have a rat tail system here which will hang off the back of the pack the current will flow between the rat tail and the uh, anode probe it's in dave's hand the fish will not be attracted to this rat tail so based off of our specific conductivity i can adjust our voltage setting over here on the backpack we're approximately at 350 volts if i turn the backpack on We're right around one amp of current, which is what we shoot for for an effective electro fishing. So now if we turn over to Bob Weber here, he has tied on his hip chain, which will be used to measure the overall length of the site. And we'll also take a width measurement as we move up through our sample site. And to do that, We'll take multiple widths, that way we can get an average width for the entire site. It'll be used to calculate an entire surface area of the site, which will then be used for a biomass estimate. So I think we're ready to get started. 